I found the most cursed pro Valorant team who already just one game into the season showed that they seem to be following the tragic storylines they ran into all throughout the inaugural franchise league. That being Messi's org Crew Esports from Chile. This is shocking if you know the history of this team in VCT, where they were once considered the premier Latin American team who made it to every single major event before the regional leagues were even founded. Something no other team ever did. Now, they're the bottom dwellers of the Americas League, going a shamefully perfect 0-9 in league play before going on their crazy LCQ run that qualified them for champions. But what if I told you that their 0-9 record had a real possibility to have been 6-3? with wins against EG, Loud, Sentinels, and Cloud9, if just one or two small things went their way. While diving into the VODs and stats of this team, it became clear that Crew was playing cursed all season, the same curse that stopped them short in their recent match against G2 in the kickoff tournament. So let's take a look at each little cursed moment that built up against this helpless Crew team that left them 0-13 outside of the LCQ since the beginning of 2023. But first, make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss a single video about up-to-date Pro Valorant content all throughout the VCT season. You won't want to miss out. Alright, let's get into the beginning of Crew's curse with one old Ukrainian man, Naviz Angel. In the first round of the lock-in tournament in Sao Paulo, Crew were matched up against Navi. And while now we would probably see this as an easy win for Navi, at the time, there seemed to be some real talk that it could go either way. And while the match didn't start off good for Crew, being blown off their map pick of Ascent, Crew still had all the confidence to come back and force a map 3, like they had done with this core team dating all the way back to 2021. So they came out swinging on Lotus, pretty much winning every single rifle round on their attack with a clean 9-3 lead. But with the change of the half began the curse, activating an otherwise dormant Angel, who after going 4-11 on Omen, decided to have the half of a lifetime, picking up 23 kills in only 11 rounds, where he also got two 4Ks and three 3Ks on their way to one of the first 9-3 curses of the new season, eliminating crew from lock-in. And of course, this was just the start of the unfortunate season they would end up having. With the first match of the regular season against Furia being one of the more milder cases of them choking, with them playing Furia close throughout, getting within two of winning map one, when it mattered most, they lost trades that earlier in the map they would have converted, with MW Zera consistently getting the first kill in these critical rounds, leading to a 13-11 loss, a scoreline that would become really familiar for them. And with that tough loss on their own map pick, they were unable to rebound, losing map 2 13-5, starting the regular season on the wrong foot. But like I said, this was one of the more mild cases of choking, as really they just got beat in their first matchup. But in week 2 is where the real roller coaster starts for crew fans. Against MIBR, they picked up Ascent 13-9 and looked poised to win their first match. And with an 8-4 lead going into the half on Lotus, it looked all but done. But this is where we see the first real case of the curse appearing. All throughout their defense, they were unable to hit their shots, as JZZ had a half of a lifetime going 17-5, while Kesnet disappeared when they needed him the most, going 2-12 on their way to losing 11-13. Yet another blown lead by Crew this season already, something that you'd get very used to as you go deeper into Crew's season. But Crew still had a very big chance to take a win with Pearl coming up next, and it was a nail-biter with both teams taking big win streaks throughout the map with every single win on the defensive sides being on retakes. MIBR though, brought it to a map point in round 20, but crew were able to win some hard fought rounds, forcing overtime. But this is where the curse struck in this match, as MIBR were just able to read crew's strats like a book, having them fall into unfavorable positions consistently to lose the map in the first overtime, losing the second match of the regular season in heartbreaking fashion. Next, they moved on to playing Evil Geniuses, who after losing their first two matches of the season, decided to switch to an unproven rookie in Demon 1, with this match being the first time he'd be playing the whole game. And it looked like this would be Crew's first win of the season, as it looked good early taking a 9-3 lead on EG's pick of Pearl. But then, the curse struck yet again. They lost 8 of the last 10 rounds to fall down 0-1. But on their own map pick of Ascent, they flipped the script, coming back from their own 4-8 deficit to win 13-11. So now onto map 3, and it looked like to be a back and forth match all the way down to the wire. But that's when two of the most important players in the run that EG would have that year activated for the first time ever. 
Calm and Demon 1 put the map on their backs, winning the last 6 rounds of their attack to hand crew yet another loss for the season, leaving them as the final team in the Americas that were winless. And that wouldn't change after their match against 100 Thieves in the next week, even after destroying them on Ascent 13-4, as well as taking an 8-4 lead on Split. 5 round wins away from finally winning for the first time in 2023, when they were yet again struck by the curse. Losing the first 6 rounds, with everything going right for 100 Thieves and everything going wrong for Crew, they were unable to stop the slide as they lost 13-11 on 2 nail biting retake defenses that just didn't pan out. And with that devastating loss, they had no chance on Fracture, putting them to 0-4. They then played NRG, which was close in the first map but once Ardis and the rest of NRG got heated up, Crew just didn't really stand a chance, with them reaching past the halfway point of the regular season still winless. And they would be up against their hardest task yet, Loud, a team they actually bested in their lone matchup against each other back in Masters Copenhagen, which I actually have a special connection to that match as that was the first video of mine that actually got over a thousand views, which you can check it out in the top right and see just how much I've changed since then. For Crew and Loud, times are much different than how they were in 2022, with Loud coming off of a world championship. They had only lost one match that season up to that point, which was the insane grand finals and lock-in, with a few teams pushing them to three maps, but ultimately falling short. But after pulling back an 8-4 deficit into a 13-10 victory on Loud's map pick, Crew were quickly thrust into the driver's seat of a possible upset onto the league leaders. And on their map pick of Ascent, they were even closer to picking up a win, with two round wins away at 11 to 7. But like always, this is when the curse poked its ugly head. Dark coming for Kawanzine. There it is. And they're all lit up, man. A. He had to throw really early in this case and loud, clean this up onto it. Unless he goes for a flash, he does. And he does, and he gets the kill. He gets them both. And the alarm bot's gonna spot him. The alarm bot spots him. I mean, the big pressure right now, Melzer. What was the plan? Miscommunication all around now. Still getting these kills on the site right now. Kessner's dashing back. This is still a chaotic situation. They're just so weak, though. And he's not even going for it. They lost the map 11 to 13 thanks to Aspas and Tuez stepping up big when their team needed them the most, forcing map 3. And while Crew put up a fight on Split, it was clear their best chance to win had already passed as they lost 10 to 13 to yet again stumble at the final barrier. The losses kept ticking up to 0 and 6 now. In week 6, they got their one true blowout loss of the season against Leviathan, who defeated them in convincing fashion 13 to 4 on both maps to move them to 0 and 7 with only 2 weeks left in the season. And week 7 would be by far their best chance, with them facing Sentinels who just 2 days before the match announced they were releasing their IGL death from the roster after the Orc had gotten rid of the head coach Psycho. Ultimately, this team was the biggest dumpster fire in the league at that point, and Crew could take advantage of that. And on Lotus, Crew and Sen traded blow for blow, with the teams trading the lead back and forth all throughout regulation, forcing an overtime. With a win here, Crew could launch themselves to a 2-0 sweep on Sentinels, as Bind had just re-entered the map pool, which had been one of Crew's best maps before it was removed. But in overtime, the curse struck again. But even when they lost Heartbreakers like this, Crew stayed resilient, putting up a good fight on Bind after being down 4-8. But it was clear that the overtime loss affected them, as they lost 10-13, putting them one match away from tallying America's first winless season. And it looked like there was absolutely no hope as they're faced up against one of the most shocking teams in the league so far, C9, who strung together a near perfect 7 and 1 record to that point. But one thing we learned about Crew throughout this journey is that no matter how good your team supposedly is, Crew will always play them close. And on C9's pick, they jumped out to a 9 3 lead, with Davies and Kesnet leading the way for the team on the attack. And things were looking great after they were able to pull off three successful retakes in a row to move it to match point at 12 to 6. But you already know what happened. They lost every single round, with their closest shot to close it out being in round 24, where they got the first two kills, but then this happened. Surely this is it, the slam dunk finish. All the kills got away, no way, no way! One enemy remaining. They lined them up, they didn't know where they were. That rears its head. Playing off of each other, the trading is run. immaculate. Lockdown earned. Round the side, it's up to Davies. He's been immaculate. But immaculate doesn't win it against that. The double face. 
crew were able to get to map point yet again in the first round of OT, but were wiped off the site in the last three rounds to lose map one in second overtime. Crew rebounded quickly though, with Kesnet taking out his season-long frustrations on the C9 players while on defense, going 12-3 to win all seven rounds of their defense to push it to decisive map three, with Crew's final chance to save themselves from humiliation in the balance. But it wasn't meant to be, as they fell down to a deficit early that they couldn't come back from, losing 9-13 to to end the match. And with that loss, they went a perfectly imperfect 0-9 for the season with them blowing a total of seven leads of eight, four, or greater. That's just about one map a match that they should have won. Along with that, they also lost every single overtime they were placed in, going 0-5 in them. The last big stat that shows how close they were to winning maps were how many 13-11s they ended up in, with seven occurring, with them only winning two. These stats are something we might never see again in Valorant, a team completely cursed for a whole regular season. Of course, we know the rest of the story as they went on an unbelievable run in the last chance qualifiers, finally turning those near wins into victories, breaking their over seven month long winless streak in the process. But that didn't shake off the curse. It just rested until champions, where they were eliminated in two matches, being unfortunately matched up against the second best team of the year in Paper Rex, and then lose an insanely close matchup against Giants in overtime to end their season. But even with the end of the season, the curse continued into this season, with their most recent game against G2 being proof that the issues they had closing out tight matches last season might just follow them into this season, as they continued to fall in the last hurdle, losing Ascent 13-11, and with that loss to G2, they fell down to the elimination match already, starting another possibly heartbreaking season for a team and fan base that desperately needs a win. So after looking at that, how do I predict they will do throughout the rest of the season? Well, in their match against G2, they looked really solid, with the release of Nags being the best for the team, as they look like a more cohesive roster than before, with their new pickups of Mata and Shai looking to be huge upgrades from last year. Ultimately, I believe they'll get their first America's League win this coming split, but I believe they'll still fall somewhere between 7th and 9th in the league, as the Americas look so scary, with each team looking like they go on a deep run. I hope I'm surprised and Crew finally breaks away from their curse, but only playing more of the season will tell, which you can keep up to date with all things Pro Valorant by subscribing to this channel, as we'll be making videos all throughout the VCT season that will keep you in the know as everything rapidly changes, so make sure you have notifications on so you don't miss a thing.